Let's start talking about it. To preface this next reaction, uh, Rune and I had a lot of talk about this album. And I, I really love this album. It's a really unique, for, for a pop album, for an artist as popular as, or a group as popular as like Florence and the Machine, it's a really well done album. Like, uh, hey Shadow, good to see you. Sub Michael, hello, hello. If you haven't listened to Dance Fever, it's it's just like a good listening experience, even if you don't like that kind of music. I, I would really recommend it. So this is gonna be Rune's request for the month of July? June or July, one or the other. Here's the acoustic version of My Love. I love how her voice sounds here, it's so clear. So I needed to request it. I wanted to request a video of the performance uh, I went to, but there are only a few fan cams on YouTube at the moment. Yeah, Rune got to see them on tour after this album, which is super exciting. Dance Fever felt like going through several exhibits at an art museum. Yeah, no, it's a really, it's really well done. Uh, and the, her integrity as an artist comes across really, really strongly. So let's jump into it. It's a live radio recording of my love. I was always able to write my way out. Song always made sense to me. Now I find that when I look down, and the page is empty well, There is nothing to describe Except the moon Still bright against the worrying sky I pray the trees will get their leaves soon So tell me where to put my You know, it, it's a definitely a clearer sound than what you'll hear in a lot of the recordings that would have, that have more, maybe a more richer, uh, a more richer orchestration, right? That's what I would say in terms of, you know, in classical music vocabulary. Uh, since we only have the harp, acoustic guitar, stand-up piano, uh, and she's recording on a really, really nice mic right up close, which you don't always get, especially in, in live uh, performances that we've heard of hers, which are so full of energy, so boisterous. But what Rune said in her commentary as having so much clarity is so true here. She's so close on this con condenser mic and it's really picking up every single subtlety. Uh, and a vocal observation I wanna make uh, is how fine and thin and, and concise she's making the sound. There's a lot of historical documentation of some of the historically most rich uh, singers, like rich vocally, um, biggest sounds that they can make in a hall, cutting through an orchestra, cutting through textures of music, but with the idea that it is simply a laser beam of sound. It is a, someone referred to it as like a razor blade. That's what the sound feels like when the, when the timbre cuts through. I think a lot of us singers, when we're starting out, we like to have this idea that we're using our entire sound so we feel we try to feel as much as possible happening but the key especially to creating a unique timbre a fine timbre in uh, contemporary music that you'd record in a studio or something like that is finding the focus point of that sound and i'm using this hand gesture probably to a detriment because when we think about focusing the sound bringing the sound together Usually it results in bringing the sound into your nose because you, when I'm making this gesture, which so many people do to focus the sound, 
it puts the sound. What you really want to think about is focusing the sound in above the pharynx, focusing the sound there, because what happens is then it'll come out. And while it might feel further back to you, it'll feel maybe it shouldn't feel pinched, but it might feel small. Then what's going to happen is the sound will hear. It'll sound to your audience. It'll sound to the microphone like it's like it's coming here, like it's coming out. It's very clear and crystal clear. Um, you know, it's not going to sound nasal because notice she doesn't sound nasal, but that sound is so crystal clear. And that's one of the reasons why it does sound so good with the acoustic guitar, with the harp, with the piano, these delicate string instruments, right? Um, you know, the the piano, of course, is a percussion instrument that has little felt hammers that hit on strings, same strings as the harp, similar strings to the guitar. Uh, and so those create these larger kind of longer vibrations. And then the voice can vibrate faster and more fine with a lot more complexity in the tone. And that's what allows her with such a wonderful microphone that gets every little harmonic detail in her voice. It allows it to be so crystal clear in the mix. And obviously there's a wonderful treatment on that mic too, but I'm not as well versed uh, in that, you know, a nice, some tasteful reverb, some little EQ stuff here and there. Uh, nice, nice uh, compression, but it's that fineness that generates right in the back of the throat that you can hear that crystal clearness. Uh, and, you know, I'm only really able to make these observations because it's such like a, a low key setup because there's only those simple instruments uh, and the voice. But notice now that now that I said that, listen and, and where do you where do you feel like the sound is is placed? Do you feel like she's sending it forward, or do you feel like you know? Or do you feel like it's in her throat? It's a, it's an interesting exercise to kind of think about where a singer is sending that sound because everyone kind of has that different quality. Uh, and if you can start to imagine that for yourself when you're listening, then you can start to really understand how the voice works and also the mystery behind it because what you imagine they're singing it the placement wise may not be where the generation of the voice actually is in their concept, right? All of this is conceptual. All of this is in the mind. You can never for sure really say exactly where the voice is uh, coming in from a usage standpoint, obviously through pedagogy and anatomy, you can understand how the function of the materials work. But in the moment, you don't think about those things and she doesn't No, no singer does. <laughs> That was probably the broadest sound she's had. And what's exciting is that even though she goes, you know, two thirds through the song, perfect time to put in a really exciting high note. Uh, and she also puts in a really lovely, rich, resonant, a larger low note, right? She uses the colors she's painting within her voice to keep this fine line up to a point and then she lets it grow and that creates excitement to the listener. Wait for time to do it. I don't know where to put my love. As the mouth, the mouth shape she has is ah, 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 ah. Keeping that, that sound that was eh, 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 grows as she gets higher to ah, 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 ah. And then she brings it down and you can hear the difference in the sound when she keeps it large like that in her chest voice.
crispy, wonderful head voice right there. What's up, Kintsugi? Hello, hello. Yeah, this this is a wonderful sound. So she letting she's letting that the air kind of go through and destabilize the voice a little bit, and it, it gives us this vulnerability in the sound that that breathy head voice timbre. Um, but nothing, no sound she's made in this recording strays from that core space. The the conception of the sound being further back in the mouth will grow and it'll shrink, but it'll never shift forward. It'll never feel like it's going, it's pushing forward. It's always going to stay. When it when it's a voice that is as organized and as clear as this, it it means that that placement is always going to be in the same space, and she can play with the shape of it, the the direction it's going, all of that. But it never goes into this pushy space that a lot of singers trying to emulate this sound will fall into because they'll they'll think they need to place the sound forward. The sound will feel like it's going forward, but you can't make it go there, right? It's all going to be grounded in that. That's what grounded means. It, it means it's stable in this one place throughout your entire range, but without tension, right? It's a very fine line. Yeah, let's listen to it one more time because I think it's worth it's worth it. Um, the contrast between the last refrain and going back that that breathiness and then uh, that heady sound, that sweet sound, and then the higher bridge. My arms empty, the skies empty, billboards empty, they mine. My arms empty, the skies empty. Rune, thank you for that. I always count on you for these heartfelt reaction requests. Thank you very much. It's beautiful.